morning, Ipsy Fairy. Thank you for <laughs> Good morning. I am just so encouraged that you came and braved the weather to be with us this morning. We're going to start with our Advent reading with a Rick and Sharma. This is the first Sunday of Advent. I announced to my kids that um, there's one week till Christmas. <laughs> one week. So a couple more sleeps and we're right on top of it. We're we're looking forward to uh, worshiping with you on Christmas Eve, so please come on out. We also um, have a couple other ways that we're celebrating um, Christ's birth, um, but we'll start with our Advent reading from Rick and Sharma. Reading from Luke 1, verse 46 to 55, Mary said, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds for his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to, his fa to our fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we have one more special announcement from um, our leadership team. And we'll be having a Scott and Kathy come to the mic, please. Good morning. Get a little more volume out of this microphone, right? Well, thank you to all of you for being here, but thank you to all of you for your tremendous generosity. We want Pastor Steve and Kathy to feel loved, valued, and appreciated and in tremendous ways this year, you came through again on all of our behalf. So Kathy and I want to ask Steve and Kathy to come up. And the armored car is rolling into the parking lot. <laughs> but thank you very much. Join me in showing your appreciation. And Merry Christmas. stand as we sing.
Good morning, FC Free. Oh my goodness, I just love when you do that. My name is Becca, and I am so eternally grateful that you guys are here with us today where we love God, love all people, and follow Christ together. At this time, we'd ask if you guys could take out your Connect card. It should be a little piece of paper you were handed when you walked in those doors out there. But if you weren't given one, that's okay. There are some in the pew rack in front of you. It's a little way for us to get to know you, to pray for you, to praise with you if that's something that you would like. And at the end of service, we can put it in the giving boxes in the back. If you're online with us today, that's A-OK. I've got a way for you to fill out the Connect card as well. That's going to be at ipsyfree.org slash connect. Tonight at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we're going to be having a come and go Christmas communion. It's going to be a place for us to reflect and to pray and also take part in the lovely opportunity of communion. So we invite you to bring your friends and family and your loved ones to come do that with us tonight. Another way for us to support our local and our not local, our global kingdom-wide um, reach for Be Christmas is with our lovely family, the Rollers. They minister in Latin America. They do church building down there. They're stationed in Colombia. And we would love, if that's on your heart, that you would help support them. There's going to be information out in the lobby for you to do that. And you can go to ipsyfree.org slash Be Christmas, I believe, to do that as well. Speaking of Christmas, we're not going to be having a Christmas Day service. However, you can join us the evening before at 6 p.m. for our Christmas Eve candlelight service. We would really in like to invite you to have your friends and family come and do that with us so that you can spend Christmas the way that Jesus did with his family, alone or with a group of people, and be able to have that time in family. So that's going to be Saturday, December 24th at 6 p.m. here in our sanctuary. Another lovely thing for us starting this new year is going to be our Prayer Warrior Boot Camp. That's going to, I believe, start on Friday, January 6th at 6.30. Um, there's going to be more information about that in the lobby if you're interested. It is going to be a wonderful opportunity for everyone. At this time, I want to invite you guys to give. It's something that... We talk about, I feel like, a lot here at Ipsy Free, and I wanted to tell you that it really does more than you think, than you might think it does. It created a lot of opportunities for me and other people my age when we were in the youth group to be able to go and invite other people and maybe even bring some people who didn't know Christ to Christ. It created opportunities for us to have a deeper understanding of what it feels like to be loved on a personal level with some of you guys or even on a spiritual level with Christ and if that's something that you feel called to do there's three ways to go about that if you want to give online there's an easy way to do that that's going to be ipsyfree.org slash give you could do it in the giving boxes out in the back where you're going to be putting your connect card or by mail if that's the easiest option for you and at this time I would like to ask for you to bring out your Bibles as we prepare for the word of Christ Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Good. Glad you're doing well. Don't want to run into that a little bit later. Hey, uh, one thing I want to start with is on the way out, you're going to be handed uh, this card. It says Merry Christmas on one side, some beautiful pictures of Christmas on one side. But on the other side is a short de uh, Christmas Day devotional we want you to take and do uh, with the Lord. You and your family, or you and your spouse, or you by yourself, these questions and the scripture on there will help to uh, focus your attention on really why Christmas is Christmas. And so we want you to take these with you and uh, participate uh, in this devotional. So our connection team will have those available for you at the end of the service and uh, we would love for you to do that. Again, it's one, of those, it's one of those grand opportunities where we get to spend Christmas just as Jesus spent his first Christmas, right? So we want you to do the same. Well, we have been reflecting on the family story of Jesus and, and the fact that Jesus, like us, comes from someplace. You know where I've, I come from, if you, uh, you were listening last week. Uh, uh, so from someone 
uh, we all come from someone, and we have a story. In fact, today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we're going to talk about that, that we have a family story and that Jesus comes from a family story, a story of a covenant be- made between his created and, his, and the creator, uh, between us and him. And the fulfillment of that is found in Jesus. The word may flesh, or the word, or the name he is given is Emmanuel for that. God with us. Did you know that we all have this longing in our hearts? You have this groaning in your heart, this longing in your heart. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but last weekend, I was privileged to officiate the marriage of two of Ipsy Free's very own, Matt and Melissa. And uh, they stood at this altar and covenanted together out of a love they have for each other. But the incredible thing about that story is it's not just uh, about their love for each other. Just as Kathy and I spoke those vows about 30 years ago, it is truly about the, the love that God has for us that is demonstrated through us to one another. And this love that they... Uh, they demonstrated in this covenant vows before God last week, and some of you have already done, is really this flow of this great love God has for all of humanity. A love that is not born of feelings. It may have a little bit of twinge there, and uh, yet as we come to discover, love really is a decision and an action. It's something that takes place. So during Advent, we prepare and wait for the coming celebration of the birth of Jesus. In fact, uh, just all of the the frenzy of the hurry uh, and the hustle hopefully gives way to a little bit of hush and quiet, right? Uh, If it hasn't already in the days ahead. But it also comes with this great longing and maybe even in some of us of this great groaning, right? just waiting not only to celebrate Jesus' birth, but also with his reappearing of his second coming. And while we live and love in the way of Jesus to bring uh, heaven to earth, all of us as followers of Jesus, we have this deep desire, this deep hunger, this deep groaning, not just for those of us in this room, but for all, for his second return. In fact, Jesus gives us these words that often we read, uh, or I have read, at least, most often at funerals. But he says this in John, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to... Would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you... I will come back and take you with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the place where I'm going. He reassures his disciples and those around him, look, I am the promise keeper, and I will fulfill my promise. There is this deep longing for relationship with God found through the love and the redemptive life of Jesus. And it's just not those who, as I said, who know Jesus and who desire to follow Jesus. Do you see that there's a difference? A lot of people know Jesus and they know about Jesus, but do they follow Jesus? The world around us longs for this good news and peace that is for all people, right? I mean, Even Charles Schultz knew that and declared it through Charlie Brown Christmas, which many of us have come to kind of embrace and then also realize that there are some uh, cultural norms in there that are vastly different than today. It's written into the very fiber of every one of our souls. This longing, this hungering. When God made man and woman in the image of himself, he placed this longing to for him. For the creator within us. Not to worship or long for the things created around us. Uh, Vastly different. Do you sense the dissatisfaction and disappointment with the cult, with uh, the disappointment the cultural contract has given to the world? 
Maybe you haven't thought about it that way, but it is a cultural contract that sometimes we, we align ourselves with. That new car that you want to see pristine has now a dent in it, right? I mean, we laugh, right? But think about it. I mean, we, it's always about getting something. It's always about the next gig, the next job, the next thing, right? It, it means looking like, acting like, being like, having things like, you fill in the blank, that are less than the king, less than the Messiah. And it's so elusive because then you have it and it's gone, right? You get it new. This season is one of those grand displays of that too, by the way. We all have, and we've talked about it staff-wise, you don't realize this, but we all have these grand expectations and anticipations around Christmas and Advent. Did you know that? And we carry them right here. <laughs> and we walk around with them. Uh, maybe when we were younger, they're better to describe like this. You know those gifts that you get, right? You remember that gift that you wanted, and then all of a sudden you, you, were, you were given that gift, and it was the grandest thing that you thought, but then it broke. I mean, it's that. Or the traditions that we build ourselves around. They're good, but they're not great. Wow. The dissatisfaction and the disappointment that is carried in our culture is palatable. People are hungering and longing for things that do not satisfy, except for Jesus himself. So, Jesus is the gift of good news and peace that you do not have to get, though. This is the incredible thing. It has been given to you, to us, and to the world, right? You don't have to get Jesus. As King of kings and Lord of lords, as, as the great gift of Emmanuel, God with us. God with us, come to us, not go get, go buy, go, right? Only Jesus fulfills, fulfills that longing of the human heart, soul, and mind. Bach knew this, right? Remember the song, Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring? Let it come, if you know it, let it come to the top of your mind, because it's true. It's the heart. So let, let me ask you, how does this encapsulate the best way, this longing that we have? Isn't it encapsulated uh, largely the best way in a story? In a story? Uh, what is your favorite story or movie? It, it, and I'm not talking about Christmas. I mean, I suppose it could be. But what is that favorite story or movie that you enjoy? And guys, not Die Hard, okay, please? What is it? Okay, all right. Yeah. We have these favorite stories that kind of burble up and they, they embody our longings or even movies if you're not so much into reading. They, they're, they embody that longing of our hearts and our souls, right? Some of us enjoy the fellowship of the rings because we see it working its way out, right? Not just one, but all of them. Or the Chronicles of Narnia, right? If you've read them to your kids, if you've read them, they capture us, this idea of good and evil, the triumph of good in, in most stories, right? It's pretty disappointing you come to some movies or some books and they just kind of leave you flat, right? We may like the twist, but it's not what our hearts are hungering for. It's not. So could this story that's written almost in every chronicle, the, a, Christmas, uh, a Christmas story is one of those, right? Could it be this longing of the human heart that's seeing its way out through every form, even in the twisted and tortured and sadly sad ways of our culture? It's just the working out of the human heart 
attempting to ground it in a world that will not, and a one that will not satisfy. So, how does Jesus' story fit? Let's take a short historical walk through the covenants of the story of Jesus. See, Jesus' story is Israel's covenant story. From the Garden of Eden to today, human beings have been made in the glorious image of God, right? Yet they chose their own way. Adam and Eve, they, they grabbed for their own, just as what I've just described, this dissatisfaction, this disappointment, this saddened level of complicity to staying in one plane only. God's desire is for us to be greater, right? So sin is this brokenness. I remember that uh, as a kid, I fell out of a tree. I was messing around, shouldn't have done what I did, but I was messing around. I fell out of a tree and I broke my arm. You know when you have a break, one side of your arm is not connected to the other side of the arm? That's what a break is, right? That's the same way with our relationship with God. That's the same longing. We realize we're on one side of the break and we realize that there's got to be something to fix it. But if without Jesus, we try to fix it with other things. But the crazy and the cool thing about God is that he knew we needed a fix. And he knew that he was the only one to fix that. Jesus allows us to reconcile our relationship with God by our confession of our sin in our lives. And by the blood of Jesus, our longings, those deep longings are satisfied where other things are led to dissatisfaction and maybe even disappointment. Those jobs, those relationships, the shiny things, and the list go on. They continue to be uh, not fulfilling as Jesus is. He makes all those other things fulfilling, but without putting Jesus first, without seeing that first, we are lost. We ultimately realize over and over and over again in our lives that that we fail in our relationship with God when we do not allow him to be first, when we do not place him first. God knew this. And the incredible thing is he pursued us to fix the relationship just as he clothed Adam and Eve when they broke their relationship with him and went after him. He then went after us in uh, several different ways or several different covenants that we see throughout the Old Testament, and we're just going to do, again, this little historical history tour, if you will, about the covenants. The first one is Noahic. You may not know it as that, but it's called the Noahic Covenant. Do you guys remember what this one is? Uh, let's indelibly put it in our mind. It says in Genesis 9, 12, and 13, this is the sign of the covenant, my covenant with humanity, I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign, between, sign of the covenant between me and the earth. That he would not flood it again with that kind of a disaster. It's an incredible sign that shall stand for all time, no matter how it's borrowed, for stand for all time for God's covenant that he has for us. And the incredible thing about this is he doesn't ask humans for anything. He says, I am going to keep this covenant. The, the terms, it's an incredible thing. Then God created a, a covenant with Abraham, and it's called the Abrahamic covenant. Now, many of us may know it uh, around uh, this, the I idea of his being called. But this is what it says in Genesis 17, 1 through 22. Uh, it says, as for me, this is my covenant. God said to Abraham, my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be called Abraham, father of many nations. That's what it means. 
for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between you, me and you and your descendants after you to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. He goes on. But he, God calls Abraham to go. Now, th- think with me. He doesn't say stay in the same way of living that you've lived, but he says to go, separate yourself from your very people, from your very nation. And why does he do that? Well, one of the reasons I think that he does that ultimately is that he's wanting Abraham to create a nation that lives in trust and obedience to a God who directs their paths who gives them directions to live. Uh, God creates, this, uh, cr- creates them, and teaching, he wants them to be taught to do the very same thing. Now, we, if you're familiar with Abraham's or Abram's story to Abraham's story, you realize he doesn't always get it right. But the call is to go, to trust and obey in this God who calls us out. Then God creates a covenant with Moses, calls him to a holy ground. If you remember the scene, some of you have a movie scene coming to your mind, to lead the Israelite people out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage. Does it sound familiar, friends? It's so story after story, rhythm after rhythm, history after history over and over again. And he calls them out to be his very own people. Well, the Mosaic Covenant is, if you will, Exodus 20, it's found in, also in Deuteronomy. But uh, God's desire is that this covenant be lived out between he and the people. He is calling this nation out to live differently than others around him. It's the ten words, or we know it as the ten commandments, Exodus 24 is the summation of this, if you're wondering why Exodus 24 is up there. It's really the God calling uh, calling, uh, Moses and Joshua out and up to the mountain to solidify. But God's desire in this covenant was that that the nation of Israel would, would be different. That they would be a reflection of who God was to, not just for them, but for the world around them. To shine and reflect to those around them. To the world, the nations, and the neighbors. It's an incredible call. It was God and is continuing to be God's desire to bring salvation, not only to the people of Israel, but as we know today through a place called Bethlehem, and into a storyline that's incredibly interwoven in the covenant-keeping God we follow. And then, with a shoot from the stump of Jesse comes the Davidic covenant. Uh, David's, this covenant with David says this, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands, but my love will never be taken from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. What we know is that at the fullness of time, God pursued humanity through all of these covenants and in the fulfillment of Jesus, who is the new covenant, born in a manger in Bethlehem, but for all humanity. God was repairing the brokenness, the longing through this covenant-keeping agreements with us. This is what we celebrate during Advent and Christmas. But what we see is that Jesus' story is humanity's covenant story too. What was read earlier 
we see as Mary sings her song of joy, uh, pregnant with her child, Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, she says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. His holy, he, holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. Listen to this. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary is singing a covenant song of love that has been and is being realized through her, literally, in this moment. It is a beautiful, beautiful song. It's fascinating that many of us read the Advent and Christmas story as if it's the story of those who are faithfully, who faithfully follow Christ. Uh, it's not, uh, and it is of those who faithfully follow Christ, but it's not just that small of a story. It includes us, but it's also this, those who are coming after us. It's the, it's the good news of Christ's birth, life, and death, and resurrection for all of humanity. If it isn't that, then it isn't for anyone. And we see this. We see the realization as we continue to read in Luke chapter 2, verses 9 and 11, says, Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will, be for, will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in, in Bethlehem, the city of David. Did you get that? Good news that will bring great joy to all people. See, Christmas is the story of your neighbor. It's the story of your coworker. It's the story of your cousin, your friend. Every human being on this earth it's the story of God reaching through the millennia, through Jesus, to you and to me, to all who will recognize his unrelenting covenant love for them and will say yes. Say yes. I love this in Revelation 7, 9 through 12. It says, there before me was a great multitude. No one could count now check this out. From every tribe, nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All humanity will be there, rejoicing, you see, Jesus, Jesus is our covenant story. And this is where Advent, this season of anticipation and hope that Christ will meet us once again this year reveals Christmas. We are the name, your name. On God's lips when he speaks the covenant story that came to its fulfillment in our Lord Jesus. Think about that. You are the one he calls by name who has every hair on your head numbered by God. You are the one for whom Jesus, Emmanuel, came to reveal himself. Everyone. Yes, the covenant story that finds itself in the fulfillment in the word made flesh is truly Israel's story, our story, and the story of the world. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one 
of a kind glory. The Father, like the Son, generous inside and out, the message says. This may be what comes to our minds when we think of Jesus, right, at this time of the year. Yet in, in Luke 15, yet the words of Luke 15 come to mind. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. This picture of the father running to his son should be also in our minds during this season. It comes through this baby born in a manger but is yet pursuing you and everyone. This scene may be what needs to wash over us as a reminder. Not not only that you have been pursued, that you may have said yes today already to Christ, but that he is continuing to pursue you and allow the embrace of the covenant love or allow the covenant love to embrace you uh, in its own way, in its own story. A way has been made for you to come into the wholeness that covenant love has made. This is covenant love, right? Flesh and blood. Romans says this, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it's in those words, while we were still sinners, that we find and see the covenant love that has been pursuing us all along. And we'll continue to pursue those who are lost. Eugene Peterson writes it this way in Romans 5, 6 and 8, 6 to 8. Christ arrives at the right Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself in, for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. <laughs> you can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were still no, of no use to him whatever. You see, I think what Eugene Peterson captures for us is sometimes how we view the world in those last few words, if you will in present day language, that we were still no good for him. We were still no use for him. And yet his covenant love pursued us. So we have to ask the question, what's the, what is our response to a covenant love of, of God realized in the birth of Jesus in a manger and one who died on the cross because of the brokenness we all experience because of sin? What is the reasonable response? Paul says our reasonable response is this. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Jesus' message while he was pitching his tent among us and was traveling amongst us, if you will, was this, repent for the kingdom of God is near. But then he goes on in another spot in Luke, he says this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So if you're a follower this morning, you may say, well, wait a second, I do that. Praise the Lord. Because Chris, Advent and Christmas is a reminder, a grand reminder of this great covenant love that has pursued you and me and pursues others through you and me, right? We bear the covenant story of this pursuing God, this heart for others. It's our opportunity to take this essential and fundamental and foundational story to other people and tell them about the love of the creator has for them that came through Jesus 
the one who knows our real needs, our real struggles, and in this day of maybe dissatisfaction and disappointment, can only give the real hope that we all need, right? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the one for your neighbors, your family, your co-workers. He is the one that If they are looking, they are looking for. Maybe if you're listening online or you're here this morning, you have yet to decide whether you're going to follow Jesus. This one who embodies the covenant love of God the Father, Emmanuel, God with us. Is this you? Is this you this morning? He simply invites you to start following him. He simply invites you, follow me. Let me teach you the ways of hope, the ways of love, joy, peace. Right? Do you sense the brokenness within yourself? Uh, The places that just don't fit, they don't measure up? He's the healer for those broken bones, those broken emotions, the soul that is broken from him. Friends, if you are a follower of Jesus, I just ask you the question, how's your following going? If the God who pursued you through all of these millennia is continuing to pursue, how are you pursuing him this day? Let's pray. Father, we are grateful this morning. We are grateful that you pursued us. In fact, we're reminded, we're reminded again in Luke where Jesus tells a story of leaving the 99 sheep and going after the one. The one who had wandered off. The one who had sought greener pastures somewhere else. Had forgotten to listen to the shepherd's voice. Or never did listen to the shepherd's voice. That the shepherd himself will go after the one. Have you wandered off this morning? Have you allowed the the distractions of even the season to take you away from the listening to the shepherd's voice? To the spirit of the living God this morning? Friend, if that's you, Confess that you have wandered off and receive the invitation to the greatest gift this world has ever known. Maybe you this morning have never decided intentionally to follow Jesus. You you know about Jesus. You've You've done the religious activity. But you have yet to say yes to Jesus. If that is you, you can say yes today to his invitation to follow, to listen to his voice, to follow in his ways, to to have a life of hope, of peace, of joy. It's found in his mercy and his love. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy, grace, and love found in and through Jesus. Save and forgive me from my sins. I give you my life and choose to follow love and live for you. Thank you for inviting me to your table. 
that I might dine with you, to, to, to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are grateful that you are continually pursuing your covenant love demonstrated through the millennia have showed us and continue to show us your love. Not just for a select group of people, but for the world. Because we're reminded of those words in John, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that who, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You gave so we can live. We are grateful this morning. Amen. exciting time of the year because we we have seen the fulfillment of so many of the promises um, that were given to the patriarchs and to those people inside and outside of Israel who were hoping to see um, the Messiah come and now we we are waiting we're waiting to see him bring his kingdom, waiting to see people that we love um, respond to um, the gospel, waiting to see people that we have planted a seed in their hearts to see that bear fruit. We're waiting, um, but we're not waiting um, in despair. We're waiting in hope. We have the assurance that his word will not go out and be void. There's going to be fruit coming. We're, we're in this season. We're like winter is, in a, in a way, a season of waiting. Um, the cold comes in. It does its work in the soil. And we have something to look forward to. Please stand. We're going to sing a song called Waiting Here for You. If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you.
Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather in. And our souls glorify you this morning. Lord, we, we truly are waiting, waiting here for you. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that you're a covenant-keeping God that loves us. And, and Father, the, the truth be told, Lord, uh, you've always held to your, your side of the agreement. It's us that will have faltered and failed and, and uh, are broken broken our side of the covenant. Forgive us, Lord, in this season of Advent, Lord, as we, as we wait, Lord, as, as we celebrate the birth of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for, for well, putting up with us, <laughs> uh, if, if the truth be told, Lord, all throughout history, Lord, we've, we've seen that you've been a covenant-keeping God, and, and it hasn't changed to this day. And Father, in the hustle and bustle of this season, Father, uh, may we slow down, may we, yes, wait, wait, I say, upon the Lord. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Father, Lord, may we be disciplined waiters waiting on you. And Lord, as was said, Father God, for uh, the time is coming when, when uh, Lord, well, you said you've gone to prepare a place for us and you're going to come back again. Father, may we wait in anticipation, but with working hands to tell the story of this season to a lost and dying world. So, Father, we stand here today as the body of Christ saying, Lord, our soul, like Mary, our soul glorifies you. We love you, Lord. We, we thank you for your love for us. Father, may, may this not be a, a just a, 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 a season where we uh, give gifts and receive gifts, but Lord, may we, may we acknowledge the greatest gift in your son, Jesus Christ. So Father, uh, today we, we pause to say thank you, Lord Jesus, for this season. And Father, as we go forth from this place, may we be reminded that we have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses because he was born in a manger, lived the human experience, died, and now he's in heaven preparing a place for each one of us. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for your loving covenant that you gave us in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. amen.
Father, we thank you for inviting us to come. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of your work. Send us out in peace, O oh God, that we may know that we have the power and the uh, spirit within us to enlarge your kingdom and to love those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace.